Well, I'm Guilherme Dantas. I work as a software engineer at Viva Real. It's a real estate property portal in Brazil. And, well, we just started playing around with Haka HTTP in some small applications. I wanted to share, to share the experience with you guys. Is there anyone who still don't know the main idea about Akka HTTP? Or okay, basically, uh, the idea is to implement the HTTP protocol on top of Akka streams. So, uh, well, on reactive streams, so you can well, have maybe more performant uh, APIs. Uh, well, probably, if everything turns out all right. Uh, KHTP will become one of the drivers behind Play APIs. So, well, everything starts with a monolith, as usual, in, <laughs> in startups. A uh, bunch of guys, not a lot of money, and the need to push a product to production. Uh, and, well, lots of bad decisions in the way, and then we need to, to take care of that. But they did a good job, the product is now well, it's live for a while. It's the biggest property portal in Brazil. And now we have the team and the time and the money to invest on doing things right. Well, actually, just a bit of history. Uh, the company actually started in Colombia. The idea was to take the, the whole Latin American market. But then, again, as it all usually happens with start startups, we needed to focus. So they, they moved from Colombia to Brazil. And uh, no, it's Colombia. <laughs> and well, uh, that's at this point when they're moving to Brazil that I c come in uh, and I joined the company. They took me from, from my beautiful hometown to the beautiful Sao Paulo to work on everything with the promise that this time we had the chance to do things right. <laughs> so, well, it's a joke. Actually, uh, we, we're doing things right right now, but it's not all flowers. We're still heavily based on Java and Spring, and because of that, we have some, uh, well, some problems. That <laughs> not 99, but I would like to talk about three, uh, three main problems that arose when working with Java and Spring, doing microservices and stuff. Well, the first one is coupling. Uh, we really started all this hypeness about microservices. Uh, everyone wants to, to, to write microservices, but not everyone is used to it. So you have different challenges. You can't um, treat your code base as if it was a single application. So uh, what we, we're doing now, we just, we really are more uh, operations based than resource based in our APIs. So we, we just try and pray that Every time we call some function, some, some, well, remote resource or anything, it would just work. We don't really treat explicitly the, the synchronicity of the process. Also related to this is error handling. So uh, most Java programmers are used to just blowing exceptions and catching it somewhere else and hoping that the exception has enough information for you to, to well, recover or fail or whatever. Uh, and another problem still related to this is about performance and reliability and um, well, elasticity. We, everyone would like to, to have its APIs running fast and not breaking because of the others. Usually when you're going to microservices, you're thinking about having really independent uh, applications that fail independently. But what really happens uh, as we don't do deal with the, explicitly with the asynchronicity, we don't really, uh, well, try to model adequately our failures across systems boundaries. What happens is when some, some API is under heavy load, it starts being unresponsive and it goes down and takes the other APIs that depend on it down as well. So, well, not really microservices, we have a big application in distributed in several machines, but still really coupled. So this looks like a, a bit of an apocalyptic picture, but not really. We really improved a lot from where we were in the past. But well, life would be better without these kind of, kinds of problems. And well, being working with Java and Spring all the time, but knowing Scala, 
I couldn't do any different than, than trying to push Scala to the team. So I started uh, trying with dojos and talks and all this kind of stuff, but to be honest, it's quite boring. Everyone just hears about it and no one goes on and, and, and tries what you're saying. Well, some people, but not the most. Uh, so the idea was to get a, a, a real world problem and try to tackle it, uh, well, using Scala and uh, new features of, uh, in the ecosystem. So, well, I, writing lots of APIs and modernizing the code base, we're often not just rewriting code, but also moving data all along. So you're taking data out of one database and putting it in, in another, and we're doing it quite often. And these, these applications that we use to migrate data are usually used only once. So we, we get some data, we write an application, we move it, and then we, we throw it away. So, but there was an application that I got to, to, to do some maintenance work. And as soon as I, I started working on it, it was quite a mess. We, we had more complexity uh, in running the code than really doing what we needed and what we wanted to do. So we were not, well, only if we had some, some kind of technology that would allow me to define a, a data source and then pass it uh, some, some functions to it and, well, let it run these functions for me and move the data for me it would be nice. So I was already following the development of Akai Streams and I thought it would be a great time to, to try it. So, well, in no time, we went from a really messy uh, application with cyclic barriers and dependency injection in a code base of 1,000 1, lines of code uh, to something like that. It's like, it was really short, really understandable, and really performant. Uh, so, yeah, we migrated the data that needed to be migrated, but some, some time later, the, the problem got bigger. We had another massive set of data, much bigger, uh, to migrate again, and we decided to try the same strategy. Right now, we know it was not the better uh, well, approach, because we were reading from the data database and we wanted to do it fast, and it was like the, I mean, 20 million records. Uh, well, it was not really the best idea, but uh, what was really nice is that just doing some small changes in the code and tinkering a lot with all the, well, the, the properties of Akka and Akka streams, these kinds of materializers and uh, thread pools and stuff, uh, we got to acceptable performance. So, well, I was completely in love with Akka streams, so uh, I'm not using anything else when I need to migrate data. Well, I think this was too strong, maybe. Uh, maybe I'll change my mind. But right after this, well, I started playing with uh, Akai Streams. I was, I got to start a new project, a Greenfield project. We needed to take another piece of the old code base, uh, another old application that was quite messy, and rebuild it the right way. So, coming from a really good experience with Akai Streams, it was quite natural to think about Akai HTTP as uh, well, the HTTP library for our application. Uh, but it's not that easy. I mean, uh, Akka HTTP is just starting to, to, has just been released, the, the first official release. Uh, and there are a lot of doubts, so we needed to, to take a look at other alternative technologies also. So uh, the first one I took a look was Lyft. Actually, I got into Scala because of Lyft. It's a great framework, but it seems to be losing momentum. Also, it is much bigger than we really needed to, to build a simple API, um, especially an experimental API. Uh, Play is really, well, powerful when we talk a lot about using it, but it's also too much of a framework for what we needed. Uh, often we see recommendations from, from, from TypeSafe itself uh, that, well, if you're doing just a small API, you should not really use Play, you could use a Spray or something like that. Uh, Finagle is also another interesting alternative. Uh, it's proven in high-load environments, such as Twitter and SoundCloud. Uh, 
but it has a problem that it's really based with in, in, on uh, Twitter futures. So as I was starting a project with a team that was new to Scala, I didn't want to add another, well, another layer of maybe confusion. I don't know. I don't know if it would be this confusing, but uh, I never work, worked with uh, Twitter futures. So we decided not to go with Nagel. Finch, uh, we took a look, but it was too quickly. I still don't have an opinion about it. Uh, Scalatra, another option, uh, but they seem to be losing momentum, momentum as well. The latest news in their blog is from last year. Uh, well, and Spray, obviously, uh, too close to, to, to ArcHTP. But the point is that development is already moving from Spray to ArcHTP. So, well, why shouldn't we? And then ArcHTP was our choice, but there's a pretty well, nasty problem. There's the lack of documentation and real world examples. So sometimes it gets pretty hard to find what you're looking for. But anyway, we, every, frame, every library or, or framework had its ups and downs. We needed to choose. And we decided to go with ArcHTP because of, uh, well, the team that is the same team that built Spray, uh, it's built on top of uh, the ideas that uh, were used in Spray, and it has a, a well, solid support from TypeSafe. Uh, as we were using it in a small application, it was also safe to, to, to try something new, something like Bleeding Edge, because well, if it didn't turn out right, we could just throw away the code and rewrite it in something else but I was hoping to be successful so I would not need to get back to Spring. Uh, and so I would, would like to show you a bit of the, the main decisions in architecture we took. Uh, well, in, we ended up writing two APIs. One of these APIs mostly uh, resource-based. The idea was to, to really abstract our domain model and persistence and this kind of stuff. And another API that was like an upper layer for some front-end applications that was uh, responsible for going to lots of different uh, domain APIs and getting all the pieces of data it needed and piecing it together and, well, returning for uh, mobile apps or JavaScript front-ends or anything like that. So uh, in our first API was our first iteration in using ArcHTP. It was really, really simple. Uh, we, we had our model and our data access objects, our layer, our service, and all of this was plain Scala and some libraries. It had absolutely not, nothing to do with ArcHTP. The only layer that uh, we, we had ArcHTP in was really the outermost layer uh, where we had some protocols, it's like how we marshal and un unmarshal our model to, to JSON. It was needed because of spray JSON. Uh, and we have had also separ separated our routes and our controllers. So our routes were responsible for well, routing the requests and unmarshalling the input, and our controllers were responsible for well, dealing with error codes and stuff like that, and marshalling the output. So it was really quite simple. Uh, in our second application, we took a different uh, approach. Uh, well, we still had our domain and infrastructure completely separated, completely isolated from ArcHTP. And in the ArcHTP layer, we had uh, some serializ serialization libraries. Uh, we used something from, well, I'll show you later. Uh, in this second API, we kept all the logic of routing and the controllers also dealing with error, error codes and, and marshalling the responses inside the same elements. In this case, we call them just routes. And we also built some custom directives. I'll show you briefly in a moment also. Uh, and it was really, really nice, really easy to work with FACHP in, uh, in both APIs. Well, three points make it, well, it was easy. Uh, three points made it uh, especially easy to, to, to work with ArcHTP. Uh, the first of them was, well, we, I really 
don't like, I'm not the, the biggest fan of spray JSON. So I use it in, in the first API, but in the second I wanted something different. Uh, I would be more comfortable working again with JSON 4S. So, uh, well, the community was already working and Heiko, I don't know how to pronounce his surname, uh, released this, uh, this project. And basically the idea is to create some converters so to add support for Akka HTTP, well, for these different uh, JSON libraries for Akka HTTP, and it really works seamlessly. It was uh, well, really easy to change our well, JSON library. Uh, also, I don't know if any, any of you are, is, well, knows about spray-like uh, directives, but basically uh, Akka HTTP keeps this concept and you build your, your routing, well, like a, a tree, and you can add like directives in the points you, you need, so you can change behavior. Uh, in this case, this is an, an example. example. Oh, sorry, I'm out. Uh, we created these uh, different directives, request login, and also we used another uh, directive from, from uh, AKHP itself, Authenticate Basic, and so we can add behavior for our, our route. So here we had a health check, something like that, uh, and here we, everything that was protected that the user needed to be authenticate, authenticated. Uh, also, you can write other types of directives, like for monitoring or something like that. It's quite easy and really powerful. So you really add behavior only in the, when you're dealing with routing. You don't need to annotate every single method you, you have or anything like that. Uh, you don't have annotations mass or, well, uh, it's quite, quite simple and powerful. Also, another thing we used to, to make our lives easier working with Akka HTTP was using some implicits. Uh, well, usually I don't like working with implicits. I think it's too much magic, but in some cases, it can be really powerful. So uh, here, basically, we were, it's a really simple API, and we were working mostly with uh, HTTP codes and uh, JSON bodies. So we didn't really want to build uh, HTTP entities all the time or to be dealing with two response marshallables, that is the, the, the type that ArcHTP expects. Uh, so we just created some implicit uh, conversion and it got a pair of stats code and JS value and built the HTTP entity for us. Uh, so, well, it, it's another thing that you can use in your daily coding to make your life easier. In the end, the code was really small and tidy. It was a, a, a great experience, but we still had some, some, some hiccups. It was not all uh, fun and joy. So, uh, the first one was like my fault, uh, I left the team. I was the only, uh, well, the only member in the team that was used to work in, uh, in Scala, and I left the team in the middle of the project to, to attend Scala days. Don't do it, <laughs> they'll get mad at you. Uh, but well, th this brought some, some well, challenges to, to the team. So they, needed, they really needed to, to, to learn a lot of stuff by themselves. Uh, the first problem, again, this picture, is well, the, when you get mo most of the Java programmers I know and work with, they're really not used to dealing with asynchronicity explicitly. So, uh, well, the, the biggest point that was uh, uh, most well, clear was that you had some, some really strange uh, code, like you're firing up some, something, some asynchronous computation and returning right, right after it. So, uh, it's like you, you don't return based on what you have, well, what you're really running. Uh, so it, this was something that we needed to, 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 to review when I got back. And also another thing is like dealing with maps and flat maps. Uh, this seems to be harder than, than I thought before. Uh, one of the guys in my team put it like, uh, whenever I need to use map, or flat map, I try with one, and if, if it doesn't work, I just try the other, or some combination, <laughs> I don't, don't care <laughs> to really understand it. Uh, 
<laughs> well, another thing is that the to, to simple operations, it's really easy to use ArcHTTP. But when you start trying to do some something well out of the the, the easy path, you get uh, it gets a bit harder. So well, this was uh, a message from one of the guys in the team in the Aka HP list. Uh, they were trying to, to build a, a file upload endpoint, and well, this was one point where the well handling everything as streams came well, was more in the way than really helping us. So, well, it's something that we really want to see in the future, be it built by the community or TypeSafe, would be some some helpers to do easier. Well to make stuff like this easier. Uh, so in the end, they got to, to, to make it work, but the code was not uh, as elegant and succinct as the, the, the rest of the, the, the API. So uh, well, it's definitely something we would like to, to see some work on. Uh, another thing is that being so simple and well, working with an API with a library like AKHTP that sits really just on, a, on one layer of your application, you can really give up on, on lots of, uh, of complexity that you have on other frameworks. Uh, I mean, usually work, working with Spring or maybe vRaptor, I don't know if you know this framework. Uh, it's the, the HTTP uh, functionality is also coupled with uh, uh, dependency injection, and in the end, you have all the classes in your project annotated with uh, stuff from from one framework. So you can really change one one layer or another, but you can't really change the framework you chose in the beginning. Uh, another thing is that as building uh, microservices, you're really building really small applications. We we gave up on on things like dependency injection almost. Uh, completely. So we, something like the cake pa pattern, uh, despite giving you a lot of flexibility to, to build in your, your code, uh, it really, the, the complexity it adds really doesn't, it doesn't make sense in a really small ap application. Uh, if you really need to change something, you just throw it out completely and rebuild it. So, oh. And another great point of working with Aka HTTP and also Scala was that you, you go away from your comfort zone. You need to rethink the way you build things. Everything you do, you need to well, think again about how you should do that. And in the end, this uh, well, gave us really better code. We, we have clean code. We have uh, really, I think we got one bug uh, reported, and it was more like misunderstanding of requirements than really uh, buggy code. And well, since we pushed the project to, to, to production, it, it hasn't had any downtime or anything. So sometimes just changing the way you do things uh, gives you better results, results uh, for just making you think. But thinking a lot about every, everything also uh, gives some frustration, so you you take longer to do things, and it comes in two ways. One of them is like, uh, well, sometimes you don't know how to do something, and you start researching, and you can't find a simple answer, and just think, well, I know how to do that in Java. I wish I was there working in Java. But something that is really important uh, to, 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 to consider when you're dealing with uh, a new technology, recent technology, is that your learning is part of the, the project and the, the process. So you will take longer, you will be a bit frustrated sometimes, but well, it should pay off in the long run. Also, it comes uh, as pressure for, from, from management. Uh, you're taking, lo taking longer, you could have done that uh, well, in well, less time with another framework. Why did you choose that? So. Uh, before jumping in, into Aka HTTP, at least right now that uh, it still lacks documentation and, and more examples, uh, it's important to, to make sure that everyone understands that 
uh, you will take uh, probably longer in your first project, but well, later you'll be productive again. Uh, well, one, one more uh, thing that well, probably one of the most important things that I would like to, to highlight is about monitoring. Uh, dealing with microservices, uh, monitoring is pretty critical. So uh, probably the best uh, option, best open source option for monitoring reactive applications is Kmon. Uh, but it's uh, a bit, again, frustrating because AKHTP is so new that you still don't have support uh, in AKHTP in, in tools like that. So you can, uh, right out of the box, um, monitor play applications or spray applications and Akka actors applications, but Akka HTTP, you can't. You can get some general data about system and actor systems, but about your HTTP system, no, you still don't. So you're left with some, some, some options for monitoring. You can still use something like uh, Kmon to annotate your code and to try to, to extract exact, ex exactly the, the data you need. Uh, well, another option, and the one I'm probably taking, is uh, you can rely on general data. If you have a simple application and one that runs in isolation, uh, at least in well, a single computer, uh, you can well, try to, to understand what's going on from, from uh, the information from your actors and uh, your processors and memory and this kind of stuff. Uh, and the other option, is contributing to Kmon. It's open source. Uh, you can. It, there's already a pull request open there to add support for AKHTP. If anyone uh, gets the chance to work on that, it's a, a, a good start, maybe. Uh, to the future, I know that TypeSafe is working on, on monitoring tools, but I really don't know. Well, if they have plans already, or well, uh, some kind of calendar of uh, supporting Akka HTTP. Uh, I guess that probably they were going for Akka first and then play and all of these established things before going into Akka HTTP. So it's something to take in con into consideration before uh, starting a project. Uh, another thing is that when you're trying to sell Scala to your organization, it's usually good to have an open, open source tool for that. Uh, so you, you, you're still trying to convince uh, your team to, to adopt Scala, and you can't really rely on paying for every tool, every tool uh, to to make things work. Uh, but anyway, we we added some some monitoring to to our systems, some really well, uh, not really detailed monitoring, but just something that would give us some general data. Uh, and as uh, Michael Nash yesterday, we we used Gatling to to generate some load into our systems. Uh, one thing that needs to, to be said is that uh, we run some, some tests, but it was not really anything really formal. So don't take that as a benchmark or anything like that. It's just some evidence of, of performance, uh, especially because uh, this was the environment where everything ran. It was my own computer running IntelliJ and Spotify and Chrome and everything messing with uh, performance. <coughs> But nevertheless, we, we got some, some well, exciting results, at least. Uh, so the, the Gatling simulation was pretty simple. I was just hitting my, my service running locally uh, for five minutes straight. And well, I was changing that at once user's parameter uh, from 1 to 15 to 30 to see how, how things go. So probably this time to show you something. Wow. You should. Okay. Okay. So uh, here I, I was running right before the the talk. Uh, the basically the. The API running locally with uh, MongoDB also running locally uh, and uh, Gatling running locally, everything locally, uh, got to, to answer around 1.3 uh, 
thousand requests per second. Um, well, this may, may not be much, but for, for this particular API, this particular project, and also, to be honest, most projects that, that I've seen, uh, handling 1,000 requests per second is uh, more than enough. So, well, considering that uh, the project was, was not uh, written thinking in performance, uh, considering that ACA HTTP is also yet not optimized for performance, I think this is already some, some, some great data to, 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 well, at least make us take a closer look at the ACA HTTP development. Uh, another thing that was uh, especially uh, well, impressive for me was the, the amount of, about in the well, J JVM metrics, the, the thread count uh, while running the, well, these simulations. Yes, let me get from the last hour. And the great thing, yeah, is that we can see that um, we could serve like 1,000 requests per second with just 70 threads. This is, well, pretty impressive for me, considering you know, coming from a one, request, one thread per, per request uh, model. So, okay, moving forward. Uh, after all, did we, oh, sorry, I need my monitor back. Uh, did we solve our problems uh, or not? Well, no, we, we cannot solve the distributed problems uh, in one or two APIs only, but I think we are moving to a better path now. Uh, we're doing things better than before with Scala and Aka. Uh, the first point is that we're now dealing with uh, asynchronicity explicitly. So uh, working with Aka HTTP, Dispatch, and Reactive Mongo, you're always working with futures. You don't ha really have uh, an option there's not like to work composing futures or, or something like that. Uh, so, well, you, you need to set up uh, timeouts and this kind of stuff. So uh, this makes you reason about your other APIs as separate systems, as really isolated systems that you can't really depend on. Another thing is about um, error and failure handling. <coughs> Uh, one good point about working with, with futures is that they already encapsulate failures. So, well, it makes it easier to, to treat them. You can choose uh, where you need to, you want to, to, to handle your, your failures, failures. And, well, you keep context information. Uh, differently from, from exceptions, you don't go to another path of execution. You, you still know uh, when you have a future what you were expecting at that point. So you can reason better about that, and well, then decide if that was critical or not. Uh, anyway, we can still mess up, mess up everything. Uh, we, we have better tools now, but we still, if we don't move, uh, change the way we think, we still, well, repeat some mistakes. But the, what's really nice about uh, working with Scala and ArchHTTP is that what makes different languages really different is what they make. Uh, idiomatic, so uh, you can just block and wait for a future or or anything, or not deal with futures when working in Scala and Aka HTTP. So you you really need to change the way you think uh, about performance and elasticity. Also, another problem that I, I talked before. Um, I really don't know. I don't have enough that data to know if uh, this problem is solved or not. Uh, the point is that. Answering, responding 1,000 requests per second, we probably won't need to scale these APIs for, for some, some time. Uh, if they ever go down due to load, I'll be more excited than really worried. Uh, and there's still something that we, we didn't, still haven't had the chance to try, but it's uh, also promising, is that building clients um, with back pressure also. Uh, we still haven't done this, but uh, the idea is basically that if you have your client, if you, you 
can make your client know that your server is at capacity so it can slow down while your server recovers. Well, probably this won't take uh, our APIs down as they're going today due to overload. Um, well, this is really general. Uh, we don't have a lot of time to, to go uh, into deeper details. So uh, making it simple, would I use ArcHTP again? Yes, definitely. Uh, I'm already excited for the next project that I get the chance to, to use it. But uh, am I happy with the whole experience? Uh, no, uh, not yet. Uh, <laughs> the, it was fun. It was a lot of learning, but I think there's still a lot of work to do uh, in, in, in Akai HTTP, and probably not only from TypeSafe side, but also from the community side. Um, well, so wrapping up, we had no really strong requirements, uh, so it was a good, good opportunity for trying new stuff. Uh, the results we, we got early were really exciting, uh, and AKHTP se seems really promising. With this, the results we got now, and uh, knowing that uh, this library will still be optimized for performance, and also with the, the, the great support from TypeSafe, uh, and well, a team that doesn't need to prove them themselves uh, after building uh, Spray, well, we can hope for, for the best for this library. I believe we made a good choice, and I will do it again. And well, but despite being a promising technology, uh, the experience we had probably would be maybe close to what could have been we, had we chosen another library. Uh, so I think that community can, can make it better. Probably what can really set ArcHTP apart from other libraries is, is community. So uh, I think we should keep building and sharing our experiences. Uh, I think we should write and discuss, uh, elaborate code samples. Also documentation, engaging in mailing lists, uh, blog posts, well, documentation again, uh, and mailing list again. Uh, and also, well, speaking more, showing our faces, telling stories like that to, well, maybe encourage more people to, to join the, the community. Also, uh, this is not over. I think that this discussion uh, about HTTP, about what we can take from it and what we can give back uh, should be continued online. Uh, and well, I think we should, uh, we can dive deeper into problems and how to solve them, like the file upload uh, thing that I, I told you. Uh, and we can improve uh, AKHTP working together. And well, that's it, probably. Thank you.